Good evening, boys and girls. Welcome to Lesson 6.1, Addition with Unlike Denominators. Our essential question is, how can you use models to add fractions that have unlike denominators? So today, we'll be focusing on using models with our addition problems. I will have the models for you on the video, and you can record your answers in your book. All right, let's get started. Let's start with question number two. Question number two says one third plus one fourth. Now, if you look at this red fraction bar right here, this is the equivalent of one whole. It has that value. Now, below it, this right here is our addition question. One third plus one fourth. Now, we know our answer is going to be less than one whole because our model shows that. Now, we have always learned in the past that you can only add fractions when they have like denominators. And if you look right here, one-third and one-fourth, the denominators are not the same. So we need to make them the same. We have to find fractions that are divided into equal parts where they both can be equivalent. So I looked at three as my denominator and four as my denominator. And if you list your multiples of three and four, three, six, nine, twelve, four, eight, twelve, the first multiple that they share is 12. Therefore, you can actually change 1 third into 12ths and 1 fourth into 12ths. So looking at this model, I can see that 1 third has the value of 4 12ths and 1 fourth has a value of 3 12ths. Now, we can count up to see the value that 1 third plus 1 fourth will equal. It would equal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 12. So 1 third plus 1 fourth equals 7 twelfths. Alright, let's go ahead and skip on over to question 4. And let's go ahead and look and see what it says. It says 3 eighths plus 1 half. Now you can see 8 and 2 are different denominators and they're not the same. So I have a fraction bar right here that's one whole. And I went ahead and put down 3 eighths. 1 eighth, 2 eighths, 3 eighths, and 1 half. Now, this shows me that my answer, the sum, is still going to be less than 1 whole because it doesn't go beyond 1 whole. But let's go ahead and see that if I have 8 as a denominator here, I'm going to leave it alone because I know 2 is an even number and so is 8. If I count by 2's, I can get to 8. 2, 4, 6, 8. Therefore, I can make 8 as my denominator. So I'm just going to leave this alone as 3 eighths, and we're going to convert 1 half into eighths. 1 half has the same value as 4 eighths. We've learned that in fourth grade when we were finding equivalent fractions. 4 eighths can be simplified to 1 half. Therefore, that does make sense. So when you add up 3 eighths plus 1 half, you can count up all of your eighths and see that it would be 7 eighths. And this is a simplified answer because my numerator and denominator are consecutive. They're one number away from each other, so the answer is done. Now for question number 6, you can see that we have 2 thirds plus 3 fourths. So I went ahead and laid down 2 thirds and 3 fourths. And I put up a whole piece right above it and I noticed that it goes past my one hole, so I added another hole there. This shows me that 2 thirds plus 3 fourths is going to be greater than a hole, but less than two holes. Now, I thought about my multiples of 3 and 4, and I listed them. 3, 6, 9, and 12. And I stopped there because I knew if I counted by 4s, I would have 12. So I went ahead and picked out fraction pieces that had twelfths. And when I laid them up side by side with my two thirds, I got one twelfth, two twelfths, three twelfths, four twelfths, five twelfths, six twelfths, seven twelfths, eight twelfths. Because two thirds is equal to eight twelfths. Because three times four is twelve, so two times four is eight. And that's why I have eight twelfths up to this point. Now let's look at our three fourths. If I count up the twelfths for three fourths, I'd have one twelfth, two twelfths, three twelfths, four twelfths, five twelfths, six twelfths, seven twelfths, eight twelfths, nine twelfths. Because three fourths is equal to nine twelfths. 
because 4 times 3 is 12, so 3 times 3 is 9. So when you add up these together, you would have 8 twelfths plus 9 twelfths would equal 17 twelfths. Now let's count that up to be sure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. So therefore we have 17 twelfths. And of course we know if we change that to a mixed number, there will be one whole and five twelfths. If you look right here, you'll see why. Here's my one whole, and there's twelve twelfths, plus one twelfth, two twelfths, three twelfths, four twelfths, five twelfths. So two thirds plus three fourths is equal to one whole and five twelfths. All right, looking at question eight, you can see that I, again, laid down two holes because as I was creating two-thirds with fraction pieces and I added a one-half piece, I knew that it extended beyond one hole. So I went ahead and laid down one more hole to show that it's going to be less than one hole, two holes, but it's going to be greater than one hole because as you can see, two-thirds plus one-half goes beyond one hole. So I went ahead and put down two-thirds and a half and laid them side by side. And I know that 3 and 2 are different denominators. So let's list our multiples of 3. 3, 6. I'm stopping at 6 because I know if I count by 2's, I'll get to 6 quickly. 2, 4, 6. So I went ahead and grabbed the fraction pieces of my fractions that had the denominator of 6. So it would be 1, 6 pieces. So I went ahead and laid down 2, 6 to equal 1 third, 2 more 6 to equal another third, and 3 6 to equal 1 half. And when you add up all your 6, you can see that you have 1 6, 2 6, 3 6, 4 6, 5 6, 6 6, 7 6. Now, we know 7 6 is an improper fraction. And improper fractions just means fractions greater than one whole. And that proves it to you right here because you see how this extends beyond one whole? That just proves why. It's the value of one whole and one more sixth because 7 6 equals 1 whole and 1 6. Alright, let's take a look at our word problems. For number 13 it says Brandis bought one-third of a pound of ground turkey and three-fourths pounds of ground beef to make sausages. How many pounds of meat did he buy? Alright, I went ahead and laid down a one-third piece and three-fourths and as I laid them down side by side and I put a one whole right above it, I realized that my answer is going to be greater than one whole, so I went ahead and laid one more hole down next to it. So that way it shows that my sum is going to be greater than one whole. It will be a mixed number. Now, thinking about my denominators of three and four, when you list your multiples of three and four, the first one that they have that is common is 12. So I went ahead and grabbed all the twelfths and I laid them side by side next to my thirds. So my one third has the value of four twelfths and my one fourth has a value of three twelfths. So I did that three times and when you add up all of your twelfths, one twelfth, two twelfths, three twelfths, four, five, six twelfths, which equals one half, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen twelfths. So the final sum would equal 13 twelfths. So one-third plus three-fourths with models shows 13 twelfths. And we know that that's an improper fraction. So looking at my models, I can see I have one whole and one twelfth left over. Now there's your answer. You would have one pound and a twelfth of a pound of meat that he bought. And for question 14 at the bottom of your page, let's go ahead and do that one together as well. It says to make a ribbon and a bow for a hat, Stacy needs 5 6 of a yard of black ribbon and 2 thirds yard of red ribbon. How much total ribbon does she need? This word total means I'm adding them together. So I went ahead and laid out 5 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 2 thirds side by side. And as I laid them down side by side, I realized as I put a one hole right above it that it did go beyond one hole, so I went ahead and put down two holes side by side because it will be a mixed number. It will be between, it will be greater than one, one hole, but it'll be less than two holes. All right, so thinking about my 
denominators of 6 and 3. If I have 2 thirds and I have 5 6, thinking of my denominator of 3 and I list my multiples, I'd have 3 6. Well, I'm going to stop right there because this is already 6. So I went ahead and found all my sixth pieces and I laid them down. Here's my 5 6 and here's my 2 thirds, which equals the same value as. 1, 6, 2, 6, 3, 6, 4, 6. 2 thirds equals 4, 6. And when you add it all the way up together, add all your 6 pieces, it has the value of 9, 6. And let's look at our model and see why. Here's one hole plus 1, 6, 2, 6, 3, 6 left over. Do you see how it goes beyond my one hole? So it'll be one hole and 3, 6 because six can go into nine one whole time. Three is left over, there they are right there, and it's cut into six. That's also known as one and a half, because if you look right here, this is about half of the whole. Do you see how that works? All right, so this also equals one and one half. Now because your homework says to use fraction pieces for questions number one and two and you do not have the fraction bars at home, I went ahead and created some for you for these two questions so you can use them to help you out to look at the model. Alright, go ahead and do questions one and two by looking at the models. You may need to pause it to help you in your homework and then answer questions three through six on your own. Also, please don't forget to rate yourself at the top of your page, level 1, 2, 3, or 4, of how you feel about using a model when adding fractions with unlike denominators. Here are your questions again, and I hope you have a great night tonight, and we will do some more practice tomorrow, and you'll be able to actually touch the manipulatives tomorrow and use the fraction pieces to help you solve math problems. All right, see you tomorrow. Have a good night.